Is it me or is your plate smiling? <laughs> <laughs> is it because it's Thursday? <clears throat> You're excited about live stream night? It's got, it's got a crooked smile. Is it crooked? <laughs> uh, well, so do I, so that's all right. You, you must have made that thinking of me. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So it is day 17 of Beef Butter, Bacon, and Egg, The Road Back. And this is a series where after 44 days of Beef Butter, Bacon, and Egg, we are slowly reincorporating other foods and doing tests to see does that cause inflammation? Uh, right now, for me, the scale is holding steady right around 193 pounds. Had a couple times where it dropped to like 191.9 or 192. That was for like a half hour, one of those <laughs> half hour weigh-ins. Yeah, it's, it's like days when I've done a bunch of working out or I did some football and lacrosse games. And we don't hold a lot of stock in the scale so much as how we're feeling in our body because that could be inflammation. If we eat a whole bunch of chicken breasts and that's causing inflammation on us, you know, the scale's gonna go up two pounds for me and that has nothing to do with gaining fat. That has to do with some inflammation and some water. Well, and what happens to us may have nothing to do with what happens to you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure, you know, that, that people hear us kind of reiterate this over and over again in case they're stepping in and just meeting us for the first time and they hear us say something like, wow, chicken really messed with me and right. think that we are anti-eating chicken. Right. Right? We, we're just trying to show you guys what's going on every day with us. Right. But I have a feeling not everybody's gonna have the same experience that I'm gonna have with a tomato. Right. right? If, if I eat a tomato, my report back to you is gonna be like, tomato sores bursting out inside of my mouth, right? But that is not the way everybody reacts to a tomato. That's just my reaction, right. and that's all that I can bring you, right? Right. I mean, the thing is, is that everybody's body reacts differently. Some people cannot have nightshades. Right. Some people can't have nightshades to the point where they can't even put pepper in as a seasoning into their food. So everybody is different. And I know somebody who may have tuned in, like new subscriber and seen yesterday's video where we said, oh my gosh, I had so much inflammation and I feel like junk after chicken, are gonna think that we're saying you can't eat chicken on keto. Right. No, all we said was chicken caused a bunch of inflammation in us. And you know, I even know, some people were kind of upset with that. And they're like, no, no, no. And it's, again, this is us. It's, it's different for everybody. There's other people who can't have eggs. There's right. other people who can't have cheese. There's people who can't, like I said, have nightshades. There's people who can't have almond flour. Everybody's body reacts differently, and we're trying to try new things slowly to see that. If I would have eaten that chicken on the same day that I ate a whole bunch of Chalk Zero, my immediate reaction when I get inflammation is going to be... It's the chocolate. It's the chocolate, right? It's the soluble corn fiber. It's the, you know, the sweetener that's in there. But by just having the chicken as a variable, I was able to go, okay, I can't have chicken. Now, does that mean we're never eating chicken? No. no. As we said in the video, we're going to still eat it. It's just like somebody who says like, hey, I don't do really well with nightshades and still has jalapeno poppers every once in a while. Right. I just now know the reaction that I'm going to get if I overdo it. And we tried to find the cleanest chicken we can to rule Make out ourselves. dextrose and we made it ourselves and all Nothing that stuff. Nothing injected into it, yeah. And same for me, I mean, thankfully, I'm, I'm so grateful that so far, none of the ingredients that we have eaten have made us to the point where like, we need to go to the hospital because we've right. had like a, an allergic reaction to it instead of, you know, like a minor inconvenience. So the chicken was a minor inconvenience the next right. day, right? So I'm gonna decide whether or not I want to 
give sanctuary to that minor inconvenience. It's the same thing with tomatoes. If I know I'm going like on vacation or, you know, I'm doing something where I don't want to have any discomfort, I avoid them right. totally. But I love the flavor of tomatoes and stuff. Right. And you'll see we've got lots of recipes that have got tomato sauce in it. I love tomato basil keto chow. It doesn't tend to aggravate me as much as just like slices of tomatoes or cooked tomatoes. But, um, but yeah, it doesn't mean I'm going to avoid an, an ingredient moving forward just because we have a bad reaction to it. Yeah. So uh, today's day is pretty much working around home. I have some different videos to edit. Uh, I know you said you're working on kids ministry. We have some videos that we need to film yep. for Two Crazy Ketos. And at some point, you need to go to Hot Topic to get your Ravenclaw like hoodie cloak the that cape came in? I bought for you like two months ago with a 50% off coupon. It finally came in. So, so excited. You need to go get that. And uh, today is going to be another experiment day. So today, we're going to try a turkey. Why? Because next week's Thanksgiving, and I don't want any surprises on Thanksgiving or the next day. So I got a pretty small turkey when I was at Costco. It's about 12 pounds. We're going to go ahead and dry off the skin and truss it. And then after that, we'll season it with a little bit of salt, try to dry out the skin a little bit, and we're going to cook it on the Kamado Joe later on today. So I've already trussed the bird, which is pretty much just tying it up so that the wings and the legs don't flop around. Uh, I took a towel. I dried off all the skin. And now I'm just going to put some Redmond's. I'm using the kosher salt and put it all over the skin, try to draw out some of the moisture on it. And then we're going to stick this into the refrigerator and let the skin try to dry up a little bit. So the salt will help dry out the skin a little bit. We're going to just now put it in the refrigerator, let it sit there for a couple hours and do its thing. Then we can take it out. We'll get the grill fired up in a little while. And uh, from there, we can inject the bird with a bunch of butter to make it really delicious. Before I put this into the refrigerator, I just wanted to show you, you can already see how the salt is drawing out some of that moisture. Because again, water is going to chase salt. So by putting that on there, it's pulling some of the moisture from the skin that the towels didn't get. Now, before you actually start cooking this, you can start rubbing some of that salt off if you don't want it really salty. So I just called the Life is Good to find out where is my order? <laughs> We've got a Veterans Day live stream last Thursday that we need to get to. We had placed an order with Life is Good on October 23rd, including in that order were supposed to be these shirts for veterans, which we were really, really excited about wearing for the Veterans Day. Clearly. And they didn't come. So I called them on the Monday before the Veterans Day live stream, and they're like, we might be able to get them to you in time. I still haven't gotten it. So I finally just went online, because when I bought the stuff, I had a 30% off coupon. Right. And, now no coupon. <laughs> and I went online, and now it says the order is canceled. So I called them up, and she said that they were having, they changed like the way they process their orders or something. And they basically lost a whole bunch of orders. Oh, no. So they just canceled our order. But I never got an email. She said an email went out. So she did give me, though, it, like because of all of the issues, this makes me really impressed with the company. Talk about good customer service. Right. She was like, because you guys had the issues, she gave me a 50% off coupon to use on the website. Oh, my gosh. Are you about to go buck wild? Uh, when I have time, I plan on reordering all of the shirts except for the Veterans Day shirts, because the Veterans Day shirts were in white, and I don't buy white t-shirts. We don't look great in white It's not even that it don't look good in white t-shirts. For me, I'm a slob. Well, And yeah. they won't be white even for the entire day. I just don't look good in white. We now have a reason to finish the front room. Why is that? The sound panels just came. <gasps> they did? Yeah, so we have to finish doing all of the taping and sand down. I was going to say, you need to move the those panels. I don't want them covered in well, dust. They're in boxes right now. But as soon as we get everything sanded down and painted, which it's only another day, but uh, we can hang all that up. I just have to have time to actually finish taping what the What will wall. that day be? We're going to go ahead and start the Kamado Joe. Now, I was looking online for rotisserieing a chicken in here, and everything I see says put the charcoal only on one half. So that's what we're going to do. Got this going we're gonna go ahead and close the lid and then we're gonna set this open just to bring it up to temperature we're shooting for about 350 degrees 
And then down here on the bottom, we're gonna open this up completely. And for smoking, I'm gonna put the smoking chips in here and let the hot ashes drop down. I got that idea from Smoking Dad Barbecue. While the grill is heating up, we're gonna prepare the turkey. So I have two sticks of melted butter here. And to that, I added one and a half teaspoons of this minced garlic. And then I threw it in the Vitamix to kind of liquefy that garlic so that everything fits through my injector. So we're gonna inject the turkey, especially the breast, with a bunch of butter. And we're just going to, in several areas, inject a bunch of butter. You'll see it plump up. Don't worry about the butter coming on the outside, that'll make it more delicious. Now, if you have any leftover butter that doesn't fit in this syringe, don't worry about that. You can rub it on the outside once you put everything on the rotisserie. Next, we're gonna put the whole bird onto the spit. And now we'll put a Mito probe into the deepest part of the breast. Okay, I'm gonna go check the grill and see what temperature we're at. Okay, we're at 350 degrees. That's where I wanna be. We'll do a little hand check. Yep, that's good. Check the smoke. We don't have any of that disgusting smoke that comes up that's gonna affect the flavor. Fire looks good. Let's go get the bird. So what we're gonna do is while this is spinning, we're gonna take this extra little butter, pour it over it. Now we're gonna take some of the Redmond's lemon pepper while it's spinning and cover the skin. Give it a nice flavor. You don't wanna leave this lid open too long because otherwise you're gonna get the fire burning faster than you want it. I'm anticipating about a three hour cook. So we're at 350 degrees. Let's see how it goes. You ready for some turkey? Yes, and look at this. Tom Turkey has showed up and is showing off. Okay, let's go ahead and take this off. Took about three hours or so. I thought it was supposed to take an entire lunar cycle to cook a turkey. Well, it is a smaller turkey too. Let's take off the trussing string. I like the sound I'm hearing. It means the skin is going to be crispy. <laughs> now I will admit I am horrible at carving a turkey. Hey, if we were at Disney, what you're doing right now, that'd be 10 bucks. The turkey leg. About how much did you pay for this bad boy? It was 89 cents a pound. Oh, nice. And this was a 12 pound turkey. This is a great protein source, very affordable. I'm glad that the neck is not a part of this. That is not my favorite part. That is my mom's favorite part. Yeah. I can't even look at it. Wow. I'll leave the skin for you. Thank you. You know, that's mama's favorite part. Let's see how juicy is this. Looks pretty good. Looks really good. That skin sounds crispy. So you rotisseried this on the Kamado Joe? On the Joe? Kamado Joe. Oh, wow. Look at all the butter. I injected it with uh, two sticks of butter. Oh my gosh, and it didn't go anywhere. It just, it stayed Look where it was supposed that to. butter. That's amazing. You must love me. Uh, this is coming in my direction. This is the true test this for is Rachel. This is the true test. How good is the skin? Oh, wow. Wow. I honestly don't think I've had turkey since last Thanksgiving. I cannot promise you that I'm going to use my fork <laughs> like an adult woman. So we got rotisserie turkey. This is a test. We're going to see, does this inflame us considering the chicken did? Now I did inject this entire thing with butter, two sticks of butter with a little bit of garlic in there. Uh, but not too much. It was like a teaspoon and a half of garlic and I pureed everything in a Vitamix. I want to try this. Mm. Wow. That is good. That has an incredible like barbecue flavor. I do need some salt though. 
because salt. Can't, can't ever have too you much. Can't ever have too much. So how was the mall? It was pretty busy, I think because a lot of the Black Friday sales are already going on now. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. That's very nice. But I was kind of window shopping for something Thanksgiving giving ye, mm -hmm. like a turkey, a shirt with a turkey or, or pie or something. I'm so glad that we went to Bucky's because apparently that's the only place to find Thanksgiving shirts. There are Christmas shirts aplenty, but I did not see not one turkey shirt, which is weird. That is weird. Yeah. Usually when I go to the mall at this time of the year, I want a snack because... It's like Christmas time yep. and you know, you see some of the different things you would associate with going to the mall. Like we used to always go to Aunt Annie's, you know, or whatever that place is called that has the pretzels it's funny and you, all that stuff. You mentioned that because yes, I found myself kind of wanting something sweet. Maybe it has something to do with every clothing store has chocolates for Christmas at their checkout counter. There were a lot of baked goods around, even in places like Macy's, we're having like muffins for sale. So, I mean, it was like carbs everywhere. And I have to admit that it was a little bit challenging for me, even not to be caught up in like the beauty of, of all of these festive treats right. surrounding me. So I honestly had to walk away from a couple of stores myself. And I am several years without sugar right. now, but it was still challenging because I appreciate the beauty of, of chocolatey, desserty looking Christmas trees and, you know, just all of the, the fare that they have right. out this time of year. So I think if I don't have a plan and I don't have you guys to be accountable to, I, I might not be as successful as, as I am on keto. And I'm really thankful for your guy, for you guys. I'm thankful that I'm not doing this alone. I'm not staying on plan as an island unto myself. Right. Like I really think that having a partner in this and really having a community has helped tremendously to help me stay on track. Well, we're going to eat before this gets cold because there's nothing worse than cold turkey when it's got that nice crispy skin mm -hmm. and then it gets all soggy and stuff. I do have a Maria Emmerich bread in the oven. I made it in a big loaf because we want it for croutons uh -huh. so that we can make a stuffing. But I did want to mention real quick, we've gotten a lot of messages like, have you tried Indigo Nolly's version yet? I have not. But it's pretty much what I'm already doing because she's basically taking Maria Emmerich's bread recipe mm -hmm. and she's adding egg yolk powder to it or whole egg powder to it so that you can bring in the yolks. And I'm just using the actual, actual yolks. yolks. And I like it that way. We are going to try the way she's doing it. But right now you can't even get the whole egg powder from Amazon. And every place that I looked online... It's pretty much, it'll come like middle to the end of December. So the good news is you can just use yolks. Yes. It's working. I mean, it, we've we've enjoyed it. Yeah, you don't want to add too many because it will uh, kind of make the whites come down a little bit after you beat them. But I found that though when you put it in and, you know, it's not as high over the top of the pan like you would normally have if you didn't add the yolks. Right. It also doesn't drop as much when you cook it. That's kind of cool. So in the end, you end up with about the same size. At least that's like my experience. You end up with about the same size of loaf if you don't use the yolks at all. But I like the flavor of it. Again, we will try hers. I actually went and ordered them directly from the company. But again, you don't know how long it's going to take. There's nothing like right now when we're recording this video on Amazon Prime where you're going to get it in two days. It's like everything is sold out right now. Right. Why are you sitting here in the dark? Because I'm signing up for Elfster. <laughs> I want to make sure that I get in. Do you want to go uh, close out the vlog? Yeah, let's do it. I just caught Roscoe licking your ice cream. Do you want to switch? I'll drink. I'll eat that one. Yes. <laughs> Stinking cat. I guess he likes keto chow. Who doesn't? So we're going to have, I don't know what this, I played roulette out of the freezer. Mmm. It's either chocolate peanut butter with banana in it or it's mocha. It's mocha. It's good. It is mocha. It's good. I really want the chocolate peanut butter one. 
Stop reaching for mocha. So this was interesting. I heard Miriam mention this, so I decided to try it. I'm gonna push this guy out of the way. So, on the creamy, you have all these different settings. Right. People do ask, what is the best setting with keto chow? Because it's a lot of water, use the light ice cream setting instead of the regular ice cream setting. We are gonna try some regular ice cream recipes. I just really like keto chow and it's pretty low in like everything else and total right. carbs and you know, I, I can't complain about it. I like the keto chow and we're using butter. I don't have to worry about all the heavy cream, but we are gonna the make some ice cream there. recipes. Um, but what I did today was instead of doing the light ice cream and then two to three of the respins, mm -hmm. this is just the light ice cream setting. And then after it was done, put it back in, light ice cream setting again. Oh. So instead of doing all those different respins, and I actually think this has a better texture than when you do the respins. I think it's incredible. And I feel like it gets better every single time we have it. And it's good. So this is one keto chow split between the two of us and there's still a little bit left in the container over there which i will happily finish but off. it's like you know how you get a little bit of the ice around the outside mm -hmm. and you get the same thing if you make it in a compressor ice cream i oh, find yeah. you get more ice cream this way than in the compressor because i feel like there's a lot more of that stuff that gets frozen yes. to the outside of the metal container on there than in this but again if you already have one and don't want a creamy you don't need it no I like, I think this one makes better ice cream than the compressor. Like as far as texture goes. Texture is perfect. When it comes to keto chow. And using butter. And yeah, because like when you use butter in the regular compressor Doesn't or even well. in the Vitamix, you get like this, almost like a waxy feel on your tongue where you do not get that in which the creamy. Which it's not terrible. It's not, I mean. Some people don't like it though. But some people don't like it. So that is going to be the end of today's vlog. I mean, I don't know how interesting today was. You know, it was, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with the turkey tomorrow. Now, the reason we're still having this is we've already determined this does impact us. Now, if I use heavy whipping cream, it may. That's going to be one of the future experiments is try it with heavy whipping cream. I'm pretty sure I know what the result is going to be because mm. I know what happens when I eat we've had it too before. much. Yeah. And I think that I was thinking about the reason that it doesn't affect us when we have something like our taco pie or one of our casseroles, like, you know, the broccoli and cheese and egg casserole is because you're cooking it. And I think right. that when you cook that heavy whipping cream, it may, I may be completely off, but I think it changes it. And that's why it doesn't bother us. But if we just drink heavy whipping cream for me, I get a distended belly. Do I still do it sometimes? Yes. Yes. I just at least know that's what it's coming from and that's why I don't do it very often. And now with the creamy, I'm completely happy to just use butter because butter is amazing. Butter is better. Well, that's gonna be the end of today's vlog. Uh, now if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Well, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have ice cream for dinner, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.